Globalization and Media Conglomerates Introduction Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture on Globalization and Media Conglomerates. This lecture is a part of your paper on Media and Globalization. In this lecture, you will learn about the concept and idea of globalization in social science and how closely it is linked to the ever-evolving global media industry. Through this lecture, you would be able to one, understand the evolution and growth of global media networks in last few decades. Two, see how global media network work and dominate the flow of information, opinion and entertainment. Three, analyze the impact of global media on global as well as national politics, society, economy and culture, especially on developing countries like India. Globalization of media The phenomenon of globalization of media is expressing itself through the expansion of global media and emergence of around 10 to 20 global media conglomerates who are shaping, cultivating and promoting the media products and consumption choices of global, national and regional audiences. But first, let us get familiar with the terms globalization and global media. The concept or idea of globalization is not new. But the present phase of globalization has certain features which make it different from its earlier avatars. Broadly, globalization is an economic phenomenon but not limited to just economics, but a convergence of many political, social, cultural as well as economic processes. Part 1. Defining and decoding the globalization Majority of scholars agree that globalization is an ongoing process mainly driven by the finance capital with free movement of capital, goods and services in a borderless world forcing the powerful nation state to adapt to the demands of markets and finance capital. The present phase of globalization was started in the late 70s led by the US President Ronald Reagan and British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher's pro-free market economic policies, privatization of public utilities and deregulation and supported and promoted by the World Bank IMF as Washington consensus elsewhere in the world. Marxist economist Paul Sweezy wrote, capitalist in its innermost essence an expanding system both internally and externally. Once rooted, it both grows and spreads. Political scientist Francis Fukuyama termed the globalization as triumph of capitalist liberal democracy. Majority of scholars agree that the process of economic globalization through free flow of capital and free trade of goods and services was accelerated, promoted and strengthened by the new information, communication and media technologies and a favorable political environment after the collapse of Soviet Union and end of Cold War. Transnational or multinational companies, TNCs, MNCs, who are at the forefront of global assembly line of production and supply of goods and services relocating or outsourcing, offshoring the manufacturing facilities from developed Western countries to many developing countries of Global South. They are bringing the foreign direct investment and cutting-edge technology to exploit the cheap labour and local markets to maximise their profits. The majority of TNCs are still based in developed Global North and controlling the flow of capital and technology but in last one decade few companies from global south especially from emerging markets like china india and brazil are joining the league of global tncs recap of part one by far we have learnt that globalization is not a new phenomenon and it is a process 
The main factors and drivers of present phase of globalization are finance capital, free market economic policies of privatization, deregulation and free trade, new technologies of media, information and communication. Part 2. Global Communication and Cultural Globalization What is global media? The term global media refers primarily to extent of coverage with popularity of satellite television and computer networks serving as evidence of the globalization of communications. Wang and Surveys, 2000. We cannot imagine globalization without recognizing the role of information and communication technologies promoted by big media and communication companies at a global level. The emergence of these companies were the result of mergers and acquisition in developed Western countries, especially in the United States, in the late 70s and 80s. US media scholar Robert McChesney points out that the most striking development in the 1990s has been emergence of a global commercial media market, utilizing new technologies and the global trend toward deregulation. This global commercial media market is a result of aggressive maneuvering by the dominant firms, new technologies that make global systems cost efficient and the neoliberal economic policies encouraged by the World Bank, IMF, WTO and the US government to break down regulatory barriers to a global commercial media and telecommunication market. It allowed big media and communication companies of global north to expand the global market for cultural products and services in countries of global south. This media and communication companies became harbinger of cultural globalization. The globalization of media industry has created the foundation for cultural globalization accompanied by a fast-growing global market for cultural products and services. Recap of Part 2 Let us revise what we have learnt in this part of the lecture. The present phase of globalization is accompanied by cultural globalization which is primarily driven and dominated by the global media conglomerates of global north especially from the US. These cultural products or services are now household names in majority of countries and reaching to billions of people and touching their lives in many ways. Part 3 – Global Media Conglomerates We cannot imagine globalization of media without giant global media conglomerates like Google or Facebook or Walt Disney or CNN BBC or media mogul Rupert Madrox News Corporation. These big media corporations are operating globally offering cultural products and services of wide variety to billions of people. Most of these global media conglomerates started as private corporate enterprise associate with big corporation or as an independent private enterprise in the United States in second half of 20th century. But became big corporations in 1980s through mergers and acquisition in the media and communication industry fueled by deregulation and free market policies. According to the media scholar Robert McChesney, the global commercial system is a very recent development. Until the 1980s, media systems were generally national in scope. While there have been imports of books, films, music and TV shows for decades, the basic broadcasting systems and newspaper industries were domestically owned and regulated. Beginning in the 1980s, pressure from the IMF, World Bank and US government to deregulate and privatize media and communication systems coincided with new satellite and digital technologies, resulting in the rise of transnational media giants.
The big media companies of the United States exploited the opportunity presented by the new satellite and digital technologies and opening of the markets in most of the developing countries of Global South to expand their businesses outside the national boundaries. According to McChesney, the two largest media firms in the world, Time Warner and Disney generated around 15% of their income outside of United States in 1990. By 1997, the figure was in the 30%-35% range. There have been continuous churning and ups and downs within the group of big global media conglomerates. In the late 90s, global media scene was dominated by a small group of legacy media corporations from the US and Europe, Time Warner, Disney, Bertelsmann, Viacom and Rupert Mudrock's News International. But in the last one decade, many new internet technology corporations like Google, owned by Alphabet, Facebook, Verizon, Yahoo, Microsoft, etc. have replaced these legacy media companies in the list of top global media conglomerates. According to a top report titled Top 30 Global Media Owners 2016, published by media agency Zenith, the list of top 10 global media conglomerates by advertising revenues are as follows. Alphabet, $79.4 billion. It is the biggest media conglomerate which is based in the United States and owns internet behemoth Google and its many products and services. In 2016, its operating profit was $23.7 billion, which was more than the total of dozens of national, regional media corporations of Global South. Facebook, $26.9 billion. It is a social media platform purely operating as an internet-based company and its headquarters is in Silicon Valley, US. It was started by college dropout Mark Zuckerberg in 2004. By the end of 2016, the total number of users have risen by 1.9 billion and 1.2 billion users who are at least visiting the platform once in a month and once in a day respectively. Apart from flagship Facebook, it also owns Instagram, Messenger and WhatsApp platforms. Google and Facebook together cornered 20% of total global advertising revenue in 2016, up from 11% in 2012. It shows their growing dominance. Comcast – $12.9 billion. It is a legacy media and communication company based in the US and owns broadcast and cable networks in many countries. Baidu – $10.4 billion. It is again internet digital media company but based in China and offers Chinese language internet search services. It was first entered in the list of top 10 global media companies in 2013 and after that continuously rising in the chart. Disney – $8.6 billion. It is a legacy entertainment company based in the US and owns broadcasting networks, entertainment parks and resorts, studio entertainment and consumer products. Verizon – Yahoo! $7.8 billion, a global communication technology and digital media company based in the US offers 4G and 5G wireless networks, broadband services, internet search engine and video and advertising platforms. <music> 21st Century Fox – $7.7 billion. It is an American corporation owned by Rupert Mudrock and operates primarily in the film making, distribution and TV industry. CBS 
$6.3 billion. An American TV broadcast network operating in many countries and offering TV programming, news, music and films, etc. iHeartMedia $6.1 billion. It is a conglomerate of radio broadcasting and outdoor advertising based in the US. It owns more than 850 AM and FM radio stations in the US some satellite radio channels. Microsoft $6.1 billion. It is a multinational technology corporation based in the US. It is in the business of developing and manufacturing computers and its software particularly iconic software operating system. Microsoft Windows and it also offers internet search through Bing and digital content through MSN. It is very much clear from the above list that global media is dominated by American corporations. This irony is very obvious. When we talk about global media, we are actually talking about the few transnational media companies of Global North, particularly from the United States. These global media conglomerates are controlling the flow of information, opinion and entertainment and trade in cultural goods and services. In the top 10 global media companies, by advertising revenue in 2016, 9 companies are from the US and only 1 company is from China. Share in global advertising revenue is dominated by mainly American and few European companies while only 2 Chinese companies are there from the rest of the world. There is not a single Indian media company is in the list of top global media conglomerates. But interestingly, most of the global media conglomerates are operating in India, either independently or in joint venture with an Indian company. The leading TV network in India, Star TV, is owned by media mogul Rupert Mudrocks, News International. It is not just coincidence that the Star TV is in the list of top three media corporations in India. Robert McChesney warns, a spectre now haunts the world. A global commercial media system dominated by small number of super powerful mostly US based transnational media corporations. It is a system that works to advance the cause of the global market and promote commercial values by denigrating journalism and culture not conducive to the immediate bottom line or long run corporate interests. It is a disaster for anything but the most superficial notion for democracy. A democracy here, to paraphrase John Jay's maxim, those who own the world ought to govern it. Let us now move on to see how various scholars view the dominance of few global media conglomerates of Global North on growing international market and trade of cultural products and services. Most scholars generally agree that transnational media conglomerates are profit-driven, capitalist enterprises that produce and distribute commodified communication content globally and expand the benefit from the deregulation and privatization nationally and internationally. Scholars like Matt Lutt, Tomilson and Hamlink demand an audit of commercialization of culture by the transnational media conglomerates that undermine the public communication, human rights and social solidarity. But scholars disagree on the role and impact of media conglomerates in the general and media globalization in particular. Scholars like Manuel Castells share the emergence of information, superhighway and knowledge economy with globalization of media and see democratic potential in new technologies of media and communication to circumvent to or overcome the power of state. He argues that these technologies are empowering the citizens and challenging the authoritarian states. Another set of media scholars defend global media conglomerates from Global North as they believe that the power in the United States overwhelmingly democratic and pluralist which is the result of merit, skill, persuasion in American society and not the class or caste. So globalization of American politics and culture and its values like private media, democracy, 
individual consumerism, etc., through media globalization and extend these values to underdeveloped countries of Global South. On the other hand, some scholars like John Fisk still doubt the cultural power of global media companies, arguing that local media players can appropriate any media products for their own resistive strategy, despite the debate over the role and impact of global media conglomerates on global communication, we cannot ignore certain visible characteristics of these corporations. Media scholar Arts Lee has identified several characteristics of global media conglomerates. Number one, ownership of the production and distribution of global culture continues to narrow despite the modest rise of regional aspirants and the resistance of some governments as in China and France. Number two, entertainment formats predominate from Ghana to Brazil to Singapore and the West. Broadcasting music and movies are entertainment. Number three, consumerism rules. Marked by individualism, immediate gratification and unfettered acquisitiveness, consumerism is expressed in hierarchical fictional and non-fictional narratives in privatized mass communication. Number four, cultural variations draw from rich and diverse traditions as in Brazilian telenovelists and rap Nigerian, juju videos and Islamic and green pop in Turkey. Yet when controlled and represented by corporate media, most advance and none challenge the basic individualist, consumerist tenets of the capitalist market. Number 5. The global culture of corporate media features two complementary yet distinct representations. Homogeneity and hybridity. Homogeneity reflects the intercultural dominance of the Western model. Hybridity reflects the creative contribution and resistances of intercultural exchanges by cultural artists and audiences. Recap of part 3. In this part of the lecture, we understood that a handful of Western, mostly US-based media organizations control and dominate the trade in cultural goods and services. Most scholars generally agree transnational media conglomerates are profit-driven capitalist enterprises that produce and distribute commodified communication content globally and expand benefit from the deregulation and privatization nationally and internationally. But scholars disagree on the role and impact of media conglomerates in general and media globalization in particular. Some like Matilat, Tomlinson and Hamelink demand on audit of commercialization of culture by the transnational media conglomerates and undermine the public communication, human rights and social solidarity. Others like Manuel Castells cheer the emergence of information superhighway and knowledge economy with globalization of media and see democratic potential in new technologies of media and communication to circumvent or overcome the power of the state. Further, Fukuyama and others believe that globalization of American politics and culture and its values like private media, democracy, individual consumerism, etc. through media globalization will extend these values to the underdeveloped countries of Global South. Still others like John Fisk doubt the cultural power of global media companies arguing that local media players can appropriate any media product for their own resistive strategy. However, we cannot ignore certain visible characteristics of these corporations. Some of these are ownership of the production and distribution of the global culture continues to narrow. Entertainment formats predominate media and products. Marked by individualism, immediate gratification and unfettered acquisitiveness, consumerism rules. The basic individualist consumerist tenets of the capitalist market remain unchallenged. 
Two complementary yet distinct features are noticeable in modern media conglomerates. Homogeneity, intercultural dominance of the Western mode and hybridity reflects the creative contributions and resistances of intercultural exchanges by the cultural artists and audiences. Conclusion Let us now try to summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. We first understood the term globalization as it is used in social science and saw that the present phase of globalization is different in many ways. The confluence of favorable technology, policy and finance has enabled few large media corporations to play a major role in producing cultural goods and services for a worldwide audience. We traced the emergence and transformation of these corporations and looked at the 10 most influential of these global media conglomerates. We understood that in the post-liberalization era India, these international corporations have developed partnerships with Indian companies to explore markets in developing countries. Finally, we looked at how various scholars have interpreted the impact of the rise of global media conglomerates. We found that there is general agreement about the nature and trajectory of globalization. There are considerable disagreements on the role and the impact of media conglomerates in general and media globalization in particular. We also learnt a few terms which would be useful in our future formulations. Some of these are cultural globalization, homogeneity and hybridity. This understanding will help us in decoding the interplay of globalization and global media and the symbiotic relationship. Thank you.